so hello there. So uh, who are you and, uh, and uh, what's your business? Yeah, uh, well, my name is uh, Philemon Schiffer. I'm with uh, 3D Hubs. Uh, and 3D Hubs is a platform that connects uh, 3D printer owners to people who want to 3D print. Um, the pitch would be, it's like Airbnb, but for 3D printers. <laughs> <laughs> really good. And, and, and how many printers are connected uh, through your platform uh, worldwide? Uh, currently, we are a bit below uh, 25,000 printers. Um, and of course, updating every day. Um, and I guess to give you some sense of, of how much that is, uh, we're currently connecting a bit over 1 billion people within 10 miles of a printer. So uh, it's a distributed manufacturing network. Yeah. Cool. So that sounds much better than the Airbnb for, for 3D printing. Yeah. Don't do it again. <laughs> so and, and, and where does the idea come from? Um, well, um, I think Bram and Brian originally had the idea when they were working at 3D Systems. 3D Systems is one of the, the big uh, companies in 3D printing. What um, the situation was is that 3D printing was beginning to get more popular and a lot of people were buying also desktop printers for their houses. But what you, you'll see is that uh, it's a bit like a car. Like everybody, you, you can, it's a very useful uh, piece of machinery, but you don't use it all the time. 99 percent of the time it's, it's parked, right? Um, so by connecting these printers with each other on the platform and supplying a service to people who don't own a printer, you can make use of that uh, machinery and that's where the idea comes from. Yeah. Okay, and, 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 and how uh, well was the idea created from, from idea to the first steps of the platform? Um, so so what, the f what the first actions were to, to make it a reality? Um, yeah, so basically uh, what we made was a, yeah, what we call a concierge model of the platform. So basically it was just a website stating like we connect you to a 3D printer, uh, but everything was done by hand behind the scenes. <laughs> so um, yeah, within a, a couple of hours of putting the website live, the first order came in. So that was um, a guy, it's, a, it's actually a funny story. It's a guy who is a sort of this bungee jump extreme sports kind of guy. And uh, he always does this with, with this GoPro uh, thing to make footage for, from his, uh, yeah, his uh, challenges and adventures. Um, but to connect that to his gear, he always needs like, some sort of adapter. And he, he usually bought that at Amazon or whatever. And, and I don't know how, but he find, found 3D hubs like, uh, pretty easily. And uh, we also had one printer on the platform, which was uh, Ruben, a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> Uh, and 3D printing is, is his life, basically, and he knew everything of 3D printers. So we connected the two, and Ruben, the 14-year-old kid, printed an adapter for uh, Ken, and the guy could uh, use his GoPro for his uh, jump. So that was pretty cool. That was the, the first case. Yeah. Cool. And then from, from 1 to 25,000, that's quite a, 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 a big step. So yeah. at what way, because when you look at growth of platforms, uh, especially in the beginning, you really have to put much effort on it. Yeah. But in the end, uh, you really have to make big steps. Uh, because in LG you will never be a, a global platform. Yeah. So at what way did you manage to really make this really fast grow? Because uh, uh, in, which year, in which year did you start? We started in uh, 2013, May. May 2013, so that's a bit uh, over two years ago now. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think what we discovered quite quickly was uh, the community uh, aspect of 3D printing. So the community for us at uh, 3D Ops is, is uh, really key. And what we saw is that um, there was a lot of word of mouth amongst printer owners. So when what a printer owner found us, uh, pretty soon through word of mouth, other people joined. But of course, that wasn't <coughs> like a very steep growth. It was steady. Um, and we were in a situation where, on the one hand, you want to grow faster. But on the other hand, we had printers signing up everywhere, like in the middle of nowhere, in, in Kazakhstan, in, uh, well, mention any country. And um, the operations to run that were uh, pretty tough for us. So um, I think what was really key at the time is that we locked every city. So you could sign up as a printer owner, but the platform wouldn't work. So that reduced our operations you know, everywhere around the world. But when there were 10 printers online or, or 20, depending on where you are, we would unlock the city and the platform would go live. Uh, and we would throw a party. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so, so, so then you also... Uh, uh, helps the, the printer owners to find other printer owners exactly. and, 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 and really gave them the chance, okay, when, uh, uh, when there are 10 of you, okay, then we go live in your city. Exactly, exactly. So what happened then is that, uh, take any city, New York, uh, you need to unlock New York uh, if you have 25 printers. And like within days, we went 
globally from a few hundred to thousands uh, printers because this was sort of gamification people really liked. Um, so we were on the plane a lot to throw parties uh, in a lot of cities. <laughs> cool, <laughs> cool. And, 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 how's your and how's your organization, how is your organization built up? How many people are working uh, at 3 So So we're now a bit over 35 people. Um, uh, yeah, a large part of which are, are developers, of course, uh, because in the end we are a, a website, a platform. Uh, but I think uh, if, if, if I need to highlight one thing is that, that 3D Hubs has a pretty, um, yeah, how to put it, uh, quite a large focus on uh, what we call community and, and branding and, and marketing kind of things. What you normally see with tech startup is that, well, the majority is, is tech developer and you have one or two guys doing the rest. And we, from the outset, focused a lot on building the brand and the community also to make it harder for others to, to, to copy uh, our, our platform. And um, so that's something I, uh, I could highlight there, but a bit over 30 in total now. Okay, and, 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 and uh, why do you think uh, that, uh, that you really need uh, uh, to put more focus on, on, on community and on branding than other platforms who are having m much more technical uh, guys and girls uh, to, to, to build the, the, the platform and everything around? That's a good question. I, th I think it started as an opportunity. So when we saw the community was a... Because when we started, we thought the big challenge for a network would be setting up supply. That was the, the, the thinking at the time. And therefore, when we saw that the, the 3D printing community was so close and, and into this sort of gamification of unlocking cities, uh, we put a lot of effort in there. And, and yeah, when you want to communicate and, and send out a message, the brand also becomes uh, more important, of course. So that's, that's the opportunity w where it started. And then along the way, the, the brand itself became also a really powerful uh, means for us to uh, share media stories or to, uh, uh, and to be in touch with other brands. And, and that's why we kept developing it. And I also understand from the investors that it's when you invest in a company that has a strong brand, the risk of uh, other platforms copying uh, your model, of course, decreases. So these are a number of things which for us, historically speaking, uh, for reasons to focus a lot, uh, put time and resources on those. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and uh, is the market with uh, with much competition? Because I think uh, the, the 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 3D printer movement will be only will uh, uh, get, uh, getting bigger and bigger the next years. Yeah, that's a good question. So it, it depends a bit on on what you scope as your your competitors. Like um, another Dutch company, um, uh, Shapeways, which is originally one of the first move movers to market, you can consider them to be a competitor in a way. They also provide a 3D print service. Um, on the other hand, I, I guess the dream for us is really to disrupt manufacturing, right? So where you're currently, when you order something, it is already been made in, in, in China, any, any kind of product this can be. Uh, by the hundreds of thousands, it's, it's stocked somewhere, either internationally or, or locally, and they hope to sell it, and if not, they throw it away. That's currently how the production value chain works. Whereas what 3D printing can offer is that, okay, I, I am on 3D hubs, for example, and I place an order, and the moment you buy, somebody locally makes it, and you can pick it up the same day. There's no waste, there's no transport, uh, you only make it when somebody buys. Um, so the, the sort of value chain model of production is a lot a lot nicer. So that's that's the bigger dream. And in that dream, you could even say eBay or Amazon would be the competitor. But we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in two years. And, yeah. and, 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 and so, yeah, okay, the, the supply side went really fast because it's also gamification. Yeah. So how did you put up, uh, uh, to, to, uh, how did you realize also to to get also the demand side uh, on the speed? Because in the end, that's a danger of platforms when the supply side is going really fast and people are not uh, getting any demand in the end, then then the energy will flow away. So uh, yeah. in what way did you also manage to really grow really fast the uh, demand side? Yeah, so, so that is a challenge. I think that's the most honest answer. I mean, uh, the growing the demand in par with the, with the supply is I think for a lot of platforms the main main challenge. Um, what what helped us a lot is that we uh, we did some service, some research, and, and also through the community, we knew pretty well who our customers were. So we have, uh, I think, uh, a pretty good view of where our customers are and therefore uh, uh, can have a pretty targeted approach. Um, so one thing we do, we are pretty active in education now, which is a large part of our customers. And that way we hope to, to stimulate uh, the demand side and it works pretty well. Yeah, so uh, we can kind of complain. Yeah. And, and, and besides uh, education, what are your most important uh, clients? Uh, clients? Uh, students. You know, uh, in, in, in that area, students for sure. So. Um, when you look at 3D Hubs, um, the first question the website actually asks you is, uh, 
can you upload your file for printing, right? So uh, when I send my mom to the website, uh, she's like, uh, yeah, okay, what do, what do I do, right? So the, the first sort of scoping is somebody needs to either know where to get a file or able to design a file themselves. So this narrows your, your niche for your customers down to a very small group, big enough to, to reach your growth target, but very niche. Um, and these are like uh, all the obvious uh, people, like designers, architects, engineers, the people who work with prototyping, creating products, etc. Yeah, okay, but, but I think uh, uh, when you uh, look at your customers, so one side you've got uh, the, the, the technical people who really can make the, the files themselves. Mm -hmm. And the other side, I guess there will be also more and more and more open source files available. Yeah. Uh, like when, uh, like uh, just with your example uh, of the GoPro, um, in the end you can go to GoPro and buy uh, 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 stuff for, for, for really much money. Yeah. Uh, and maybe probably there will be also so somebody uh, discover you say, okay, yeah, I'm going to make a 3D file of it. And then you go print it out uh, uh, by using uh, 3D hubs. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally true. So no, I, I think uh, the best example I can give there is that we partnered up with uh, Fairphone, also uh, a Dutch company. Um, and what uh, Fairphone's mission is to create a transparent and, and fair phone where you know where it's come from, where it's made, uh, all these things. Um, and for their accessories, they also wanted to, to be transparent and, and as sustainable as possible. So we partnered up with them to make their accessories through the network. So for example, phone cases and whatnot. Um, so when somebody buys a fair phone, they can also at their checkout say, okay, I also want a phone casing, right? And the moment they buy that phone casing, so the content is already there, uh, designed by the community as well, they, they click buy and at that mo point, uh, an order is redirected into the network locally and it's printed around the corner. And that's, okay. I think, the first real mass scale example of uh, distributed manufacturing. And, and, and talking about uh, uh, copyrights, because I think that's a really interesting discussion talking about 3D printing, because yeah. I, uh, I had an interview with a guy from Lego uh, a year ago, and we were also talking about 3D printing and said, okay, but it's not a threat because the quality is quite, quite uh, bad right now. Yeah. And then say, okay, maybe it's now bad, but in one, two, three, four, right, in the end, it will be the same quality as, as, as your production. And so I, I, I guess there are quite some, uh, uh, or also with the example of GoPro, uh, so GoPro, uh, uh, designs a clamp, uh, you can buy it for 40 euro, yeah. but uh, s uh, s uh, some smart guy scans the clamp, makes a, a 3D file of it, and then uh, uh, puts this uh, open source somewhere at a website, yeah. uh, and then I can print it for, let's say, 20 euro, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, but then, in what way, uh, also as a platform, do you also take your responsibility for these copyright issues? Um, yeah, as much as we can, yes, but there's uh, a technical limitation, of course. I mean, um, there's no sort of automated way to check if a certain file is, is copyright protected. Um, there, there, there are technical solutions we're looking at. So one obvious solution is, is streaming. So instead of downloading and owning the file, you can stream it. It's very similar to this, how Spotify treats music, for example. So I guess in the end, there's two directions you can take, right? You can very hard and, and put all your efforts into protecting files. But that my personal, this is more of a personal uh, thing, I don't believe y you will win. Like in the end, people will download and people will share. So I, I very much believe in, in, for example, the Spotify or Netflix model, for that matter, where you start streaming content, which can also be products which you can print. And therefore, uh, for each stream, you, you pass a certain amount to the designer or to the, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so, so in the end, uh, it also really uh, 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 puts on the uh, responsibility also to the, uh, uh, to the big organizations that they also are going to think about, okay, how are we going to also make a revenue? Uh, almost the same, like, uh, like I said, with the music industry. Yeah. In the beginning, people were doing it illegally, and then the industry say, okay, but we can also think about new ways uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, to make profits of these new developments. But are there, because uh, that's, uh, I guess, a, a quite a, f a, 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 a uh, long-term term thing, uh, because the industry isn't really fast in, 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 in change. Yeah. Um, are there already in the world uh, uh, some lawsuits uh, from, from big organizations to uh, the platforms? Because I'm really interested in, 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 in like when a US platform getting sued because of a copyright issue, same like with, with Kickstarter. They also had a, had a lawsuit because there was a, 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 a product on the website uh, uh, that it uh, 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 was uh, uh, violating some some copyright issues, and then you say, okay, but you as a platform, you facilitate this, so you're also partly responsible of of, of the uh, the crime. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, so when it comes to legal, I need to be very careful because this is not my expertise, just to, <laughs> to make that note. Um, I don't know of any big issues yet currently. So we as a platform have never encountered this. Like simple things we can track, we do of course. So for example, weapons, uh, when it's some, some in some way recognizable, we have some systems in place to check that, right? Um, although, I mean, I think a lot of the sort of risk people see here is, is in the end, I mean, it's very hard to print any kind of weapon, a lot harder than it is to buy one, I guess. Um, uh, but other than that, like we've never been into any, and I've never heard of anyone like printing somebody with, with something which got, got them into trouble, no. Um, but again, I mean, we're, we're experimenting also with the, with the big brands to sort of stream uh, their content. So we, we, we have as a platform an API, which we call Teleport, which I think is cool. So this is, when you integrate the API on any uh, file which is printable on any product on your own platform, so I can imagine a future where Nike has a shoe which you can sort of tweak and design and the shoe, I mean, you've scanned your foot to the Nike ID uh, you have, right? So Nike has your exact uh, dimensions of, of, of your foot. You, you sort of customize the shoe, you hit print and it's being printed around the corner. And this is yeah. uh, the future I'd like to see. Yeah, but I think then also your main message to corporate is, 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 is take it as a new opportunity instead of a threat of your existing business. Yeah, and I think in, in that sense, we are, we are quite lucky for, from what's happened in the music and, and uh, movie industry, Espe especially music, I think, was one of the first sort of industries where, where this problem arose. And I feel that the, the system is now sort of solved. People are okay, we can stream and we, we make money other ways. And I feel uh, the 3D printing industry can benefit from that. Yeah, yeah. And, and talking about your, the organization uh, and, and, and also the funding, because uh, they're, they're working at 35 people. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about investors. So at, at what way was, uh, was uh, the, the funding uh, of the company uh, uh, done the, 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 the last yeah, uh, two and a half years? <laughs> yeah, so um, um, I would almost say like a typical uh, for startups. So uh, seed funding was very soon after uh, inception of the, uh, the company. So uh, again, uh, May 2013, if I'm, I'm correct. Um, and then a bit over one year later, so September 2014, yes, we, uh, we had a Series A uh, funding round and uh, we plan, I don't know the, the exact dates, again also the finance is not uh, in my expertise, but uh, I think somewhere uh, quarter two next year we, we uh, aim to raise uh, Series B. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and it's easy to get invested because I think uh, everybody sees the potential uh, of the market. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, we're confident. I wouldn't say easy. I mean, you have to show so resu results, obviously. Uh, no, but we're confident that if we show uh, the current growth numbers and then together with the potential 3D printing has that uh, we could be successful there. Yeah, yeah cool. Huh? cool. And, 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 and talking about the customer journey, because uh, like uh, when I want to print something on your platform, so that I then have to file, um, how does it work? Uh, do we have direct contact with the uh, person who is printing it or how does it yeah. work? So, um, so I'll just walk you through the pro process, right? So you land on the, on the homepage, you, you click uh, the big button, I want to print something that brings you to like an upload screen. So you drag and drop any file in there or you, you browse a file and then you select it. Then you get a, a selection screen where you sort of set your requirements. Like I want it green and I want it in, uh, in wood, for example, you can print wood nowadays. Um, and then we give you an option of hubs, uh, that this is what we call printer owners hubs. And you select one of those hubs and, and you say, okay, play, place my order at this hub. And all the prices uh, for each hub are, are there as well. So like any e-commerce experience, I would say. And the moment you place the order, you, an, an order page will be generated where you can communicate with the hub about the, the details, which is still necessary. And, and that's also where it differs from e-commerce at this point is that 3D printing is still complex. So uh, to streamline that experience is also like uh, something we, we put a lot of efforts in. Yeah. And, and then at the end, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the transportation, uh, uh, do people really c pick it up or do they uh, send it by post? Yeah, both. So we, we have all the standard uh, shipping services uh, integrated, but uh, of course the local pickup is, uh, yeah, it's the most elegant, right? You, you, you print something, you order something, you pick it up at your neighbor. I think that is the, the, strongest, uh, the strongest way to do it. Cool, cool. And, 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 how many, and how many prints do you facilitate uh, uh, in, in, in a year or a month or whatever? 
I, I, that's, I think about the only number I can disclose. <laughs> no, I was afraid you would say yeah. that. <laughs> uh, uh, what I can say, say is, uh, yeah, how to, how to put it without saying the number. I mean, we have very good growth there. And uh, yeah, relevant numbers. It's not like some, it's, it's, it's quite a few. Yeah. Okay, so, so, yeah. so, uh, so I, I, I have to trust <laughs> you on that. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> also a question because uh, also uh, uh, in sharing uh, the like of Airbnb, uh, there are people who are really uh, doing it for one time a year. Yep. And there are people who are doing it uh, almost like a business. Uh, are there also some, 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 some tax uh, uh, challenges uh, or questions from the tax services uh, when, peop uh, uh, when people, also the border, when people are doing it as a hobby yep. and when they are doing it as a professional and then they also have to pay taxes of it? Yeah, um, so we have a distinct, so from the supply side, from, so from the supplies perspective, we have a, we make a separation there. So um, we have an, a, what we call an HD surface, which are the industrial printers, so to say. So these are obviously the, the, the more the, the company-like. Um, but I think part of this, this whole process, li like what I would hope in the future is that, that, that the, the separation between the two basically disappears, right? The, the dream is also, and, and, and it's getting there, that a desktop printer as the computer becomes like a fully advanced operating machine, right? Um, and currently this is not always the case. I mean, in the end, 3D printing is still also early days. So industrial mach machines can do stuff a desktop printer can't at this point, mm -hmm. but um, this will change. Uh, and then the, the distinguishing between a professional supplier and a sort of hobby supplier becomes less relevant, I think. Yeah, 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 cool. And, 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 and last question, so uh, you're now up and running for, for over two years. So like when I will, will, will call you again uh, uh, in two years, so wh wh uh, where are you then with, uh, with, with uh, 3D hubs? <laughs> um, well, I can, I can put some personal preferences here. Maybe that's, uh, sure, that's easiest. No uh, um, now I think uh, we are by far like totally up and running and then the, the growth we currently see has, has continued, right? And that had, has enabled us to partner with, with really the big brands. That's what I would personally like. So Tesla making car parts, like car parts is also something you can print very well through 3D hubs, right? So the engineering teams of Tesla use us. SpaceX uses 3D hubs, Nike uses 3D hubs. That would be, I think, a, a very nice dream. And because these companies use 3D hubs as a service, we can supply customers, in the end what it's all about, right? Uh, with awesome products. So yeah. I hope my Charles will ask me like, were you all wearing the same shoe sizes when you were young, right? <laughs> <laughs> now you print my own foot, right? Every foot is different. So it will, it will launch a whole new set of products and opportunities, which I really look forward to. Okay, sounds good. So good luck with that. Thanks. And, uh, thanks for the interview. Please do. Thanks.